Hi Year 8, this is our first lesson for our new topic of probability and in this video we're going to look at single event probability. So this is what we learnt last year in Year 7. We learnt about theoretical probability, sample space, the range of probabilities, all about the standard deck of playing cards, the sum of all probabilities in an experiment and complementary events. So in the study of probability, we look at games of chance. They're sometimes called chance experiments, where there is uncertainty about which outcome will occur. And in these games, there are a number of outcomes, which are the possible results of the experiment. Now, if we list all of the possible outcomes of a game of chance, this is called the sample space. And we use curly brackets to group the outcomes together. So for example, if we throw a six-sided die, then the sample space is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And you can see how we separate those with commas and put them in curly brackets. Now, an event is one or more of the outcomes of the experiment. So, for example, we might want to calculate the probability that the number that's thrown is a 2. So that's the event that we throw a 2. So here's the formula for probability. If we conduct a game of chance and we want to calculate the probability that a particular event E occurs, then we would write it like this. This means the probability that E occurs, and it's going to be equal to the number of ways in which E can occur divided by the total number of outcomes. Let's look at an example. A bag contains four red, three yellow, and three blue counters. One counter is selected randomly from the bag. Find the probability that it's a red counter. So how many ways can I draw a red counter out of that bag? Four. How many possibilities are there? How many counters altogether? 10. So there's our probability, four on 10. We could reduce that down to two on five if we wanted to. What's the probability that I draw a yellow counter? How many yellow counters are there? Three out of 10 altogether. There's our probability, three tenths. And the probability that it's a blue counter will be the same because there's three blue counters out of 10. So there's our answer. A couple more. What's the probability that it's either red or yellow? So there's four reds and three yellows. Total, seven. So it's going to be seven out of 10. What's the probability that it's green? Well, it's a bit of a weird question, isn't it? There aren't any green counters. So our probability is going to be zero. And then finally, what's the probability that it's a primary color? I'm hoping you remember that the primary colors are red, yellow, and blue. So total number of ways to get either red, yellow, or blue is 10 out of 10, which is one. Which brings us to the range of probabilities. All probabilities will lie between zero and one, where zero means E cannot occur. That's like the green counters example. And one means E will always occur. That's like the primary colors example. So here's the range. Zero is impossible. 0.5 means 50-50 or even chance. And one means certain. Now a standard deck of cards contains 52 cards and they're divided into four suits. There are hearts, diamonds, clubs and spades. Each suit contains 13 cards. Ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, Jack, Queen and King. And the Jack, Queen and King are called picture cards or face cards. Now a deck of cards can contain jokers but this will make a total of 54 cards. So normally in our questions, we say a standard deck of 52 cards, so you can ignore the jokers. Let's look at some examples. A card is drawn at random from a standard deck of 52 cards. Find the probability that it's a red card. So remember the red cards are the diamonds and the hearts. Now there's two ways you can do it. You can find the total number of cards, which in this case would be 13 plus 13, which is 26. And we could write it as a fraction, 26 out of 52. Or you can write it as a half, because half of the deck are red. How about this one? The probability that it's a diamond. Again, there are 13 diamonds, so we could do 13 out of 52. Or a quarter of the deck are diamonds. What about the probability that it's a queen? How many queens are there in the deck? 
there are four. So our probability would be four out of 52. You can reduce that down to one on 13 if you want to. The probability that it is the two of clubs. There's only one two of clubs. So our answer is one on 52. Now I should mention that we write probabilities as fractions, decimals, or percentages. It doesn't really matter which one you choose, but it's often easier to write them as fractions. Here's the next question. Find the probability that it's a picture card. So remember the picture cards are Jack, Queen and King, but they're in each of the four suits. So we want to do four suits times three cards, which is 12 over 52. What's the probability that the card is a joker? It's a bit of a trick question, isn't it? There are no jokers in a standard deck of 52 cards, so the answer is zero. And then finally, what's the probability that it's a club or a two? Now this is a bit of a trick question too, because there are 13 clubs and there are four twos, but what's the problem? The two of clubs appears in both of the lists. Do you see that? So what we really want to do is the 13 clubs plus the three are the twos. So that's going to give us 16 or 52. Now the sum of all the probabilities of all of the possible events in an experiment always equals one. Remember our counters example? The probability that it's a red counter is four on 10. The probability that it's yellow is three on 10. And the probability that it's blue is three on 10. So if we add those all up, we get four on 10 plus three on 10 plus three on 10, which is 10 over 10, which is 1. Now the complement of an event is its opposite. So if our event is the probability of drawing a red card from a deck of cards, then the complement or the complementary event would be drawing a black card. And this is what we would write. Here's our event, E, that's equal to drawing a red card. And what we write for the complement is E with a line over the top. And this means not E. And it's either drawing a black card or you can simply put the word not in front of the event, not drawing a red card. Let's see if we can do these. We want to write the complements of the following events. So if our event is tossing a head from a coin, then the complementary event would be tossing a tail. How about this one, throwing a three on a six sided die. So we could say throwing a one, two, four, five or six, but there's an easier way isn't there. We could write not throwing a three. And finally this one, drawing a club from a standard deck of cards. You could say drawing a heart, a diamond or a spade, but it's actually much easier just to say not drawing a club. Okay, so they're the complementary events. We talked before about the sum of all the probabilities in an experiment equaling one, and that's true of an event and its complement as well. So the probability of an event plus the probability of the complement of the event will also equal one. Let's see whether that's true. So from my bag of counters, suppose my event is that I draw a red counter. And so the probability is going to be four tenths. The complementary event that I don't draw a red counter is going to have to be six out of 10. Let's add those up. Probability of red plus the probability of not red is going to be four tenths plus six tenths is 10 over 10, which is one. Here's one more example. A card is drawn at random from a standard deck of cards. Find the probability that it is not the three of diamonds. So here's what we write. The probability that it's not the three of diamonds is equal to one take away the probability that it is the three of diamonds, which is one take away. It's only one three of diamonds in the pack. So that's one on 52 and that gives us 51 on 52. Okay, so that's all for today. In our next lesson, we're gonna look at compound events.